Welcome back to This Week in Telluride. I am sitting in front of the brand new Telluride Adaptive Sports uh, home in the Capella building. And uh, I'm sitting with visually impaired skier Kevin Foster and Walter Wright. Hello. Who, uh, what, how do you guys refer to each other? Ski partners? Friends. Friends. Friends, yeah. <laughs> so you're, um, t- tell me first off, you're visually impaired. You're not blind. Right. If you look at people who are blind, and you know, there's about 10 million people in the United States that are blind, and about 20% are totally blind. And that 80% has some usable sight, like myself. So I see shadows, and I, you know, I just see high contrast, but I, I can't see bumps or terrain. Okay. And so you guys ski together as a team, and we've been here for the past week with yeah. uh, the Adaptive Sports Camp. Um, how does it work? Well. It's a, uh, you develop a very strong, trusting relationship with your, your ski guide. And, and Walter has been great. I've skied with him before a couple of years ago and four days this week. And you build a strong bond of trust and I will follow him through crowded areas. And in other areas, he'll just tell me to go uh, if it's safe and uh, tell me to stop when it's time to stop. So it's basically like you guys have to be in vocal, dist- close enough distance that you can hear him. Yeah, it's not, it's not just um, verbal communication too. Clicking poles is also a great way to right. communicate. So depending on how fast I click or how spaced out, we know if we're getting into a crowded, a congested area, or if we're hitting something that it's time to pay attention a little more, that I may be slowing up, I may be turning. So that click of the poles is really audible to hear. Yeah. So, so the word on the street is that you've been skiing some pretty gnarly stuff on the mountain <laughs> and in fact when i heard about you skiing like um all this expert terrain i didn't know that a visually impaired person would be able to do that well it, it's it's a lot of fun um you know it's it's the program like task you know the adaptive program here is so good and uh it gives me a lot of independence which is important to people with disabilities yeah it um helps i've seen it with kids it really helps with self-esteem Because so often I hear from so many people that are told because you're blind or because you use a wheelchair, you can't do stuff. And so this program opens a lot of doors and um, makes a lot of things possible. Well, well, didn't, didn't, when you were a kid, didn't someone tell you 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 you'd never go to college or something like that? Yeah, when I was diagnosed, my eye doctor told me I couldn't do a ton of things, uh, uh, you know, golf, ski, drive. um, And my high school counselor told me I couldn't even go to college. So... And I did once drive to uh, Sun Valley, Idaho with binoculars, so that was pretty good. You drove a car with binoculars? <laughs> kind of. Really? Well, I mean, sort of. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you'd, you'd have to be there. <laughs> um, so so uh, what are some of the things that you've skied here in Telluride? Well, I, I, I've skied most of the mountain. Um, I, you know, I've skied uh, the whole ridge to the left of uh, Chair 12. So all the Hike 2 stuff, like yeah, uh, La, Black Iron Bowl? La Rosa, and... Genevieve, Confidence. Um, the um, dihedral, yeah, and um, mountain quail, yeah. And and you ski bumps as well. Yes, that's what would... I'm trying. My my lifelong goal is to ski any condition, any terrain, and it's a lot. You know, I'll always be working on that. Yeah. And um, you know, so I love all that terrain, and like Gold Hill, I love Gold Hill and and other other areas. So how much do you actually see when you're skiing? For example, if you're skiing mountain quail, that's something yeah. that's like. Really, well, really steep. You know, I, I can kind of see a little bit, but I don't see, um, you know, I, I, don't, I, I don't, I only see contrast. So it's hard, to, I don't see really the, the bumps or anything. Um, my biggest fear is, is, you know, hitting a person, you know. So, and, and things tend, I have two large blind spots in both eyes. So all I have is side vision. Okay. So, um, and even some of that's going. Um, so I, I basically, um, you know, things will disappear and reappear. Um, I won't see trees, poles. I, I mean, I run into stuff sometimes. So is it mostly? <laughs> is it mostly by, for example, if you're skiing the bumps? We're, it's we're all feel. About, it's all feel. It's all feel. Whereas field. most people can look ahead and kind of see what the contour is. Right. You can't see. What do you see when when you're skiing? I can see like the bump I'm on if it's real bright, but I can't see the line. So I'm trying to turn as quick as I can, and stay as centered as I can in my skis. Um, and it works pretty good sometimes, and other times I, you know, I, you know, I blow up, it, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you get surprised. Yeah. Um, Walter, what's it like for you? 
Um, skiing with Kevin. Skiing with Kevin's great because a lot of VI people, I, you really have to coach them through. You have to tell them when to turn. Turn one, two, three. Turn one, two, three. Kevin's such an athlete that he just feels the bumps, turns, even if it's not in the trough or on top or on the backside, he just feels them. So um, I feel I'm more skiing with a friend than I'm out coaching or teaching somebody. Um, I give him a couple tips, but it's more, here's what's coming up in our terrain. I'm going to follow you so I can call out when to stop. Or we have 50 yards of beautiful, you know, soft bumps here, nice and rounded. Ski down, and uh, or I'll ski down first, and when you get to me. And I'm always within earshot or normally, so I can tell him to stop if he needs to or turn if something's coming up. But um, it's a lot of fun. That's about it all is. I can say. And I have learned a lot this week from Walter and Hawkeye. Well, you, you've been coming for six years as part of the uh, adaptive program, right? Correct. You live in Phoenix, and you, yeah. you said you try to do about a week a year? Yeah, I try to. Yeah. So what would you say if you had to show me a graph of uh, how your skiing has changed oh, in six years? It's, it's really improved. But you were an expert skier to begin with. You raced. Right. I used to race, and I used to ski the same kind of terrain out in California at a little mountain called Kirkwood and, um, and Squaw. So it was really good terrain, and, and my race guide would teach me how to ski. You know, we'd, he'd take me in a lot of terrain like we just described. And did you ever do the bell? Because I know that I've seen no. uh, visually impaired skiers <laughs> no. skiing behind a guy with a bell. No, never did a bell. Never did a bell. No. Just when they start the race, they had bells on. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, so yeah. since coming to Telluride a week a year, you've gone from what kind of a skier I, to what I kind of skier? I have improved dramatic. I mean, Hawkeye has taught me a ton, so has Walter. And I have... Um, you know, I just learned about flat ski, edging, pole plant, I mean, being centered. Yeah. Uh, they've really, I, I, they've really improved my skiing, or I've, they've given me a lot of coaching to help me improve my skiing, I should say. It actually sounds like, you know, skiers with full vision could learn something from the way you ski. About, especially when you're talking about skiing the bumps and feeling the bump and being on top of the bump and having to be kind of always on your balance. Yeah, I mean, you, you could. I mean, it, it's... You know, it's really a mechanics of skiing is just being centered. And, yeah, yeah. And, um, it, you know, it's really important. Yesterday on uh, Mammoth, we ran into uh, Yu Sawyer and some of his bump kids. Right. And he was commenting, he's like, we do this with our kids too. We use goggles with duct tape on them so yeah. they can feel the bump. And so they, people do use that for training. And it does improve your skiing. So you can kind of be ready for anything. Correct. Absolutely. Under your feet. Well, what, um, uh, See, we talk a little bit about the adaptive program and just how huge it's gotten in Telluride. I mean, you've, how long have you been a part of it? Um, almost from the beginning. So Which is when? when Colleen started it in the early 90s. So off and on, most of the time, took a couple years off. But, uh, and it yeah. seems like Telluride's becoming an, a, a mecca for adaptive skiers. It's a, great, it's a great mountain and a great program. I've seen it grow. I support it as much as I can financially as well as I do volunteer work when I'm here. Like we did, Hawkeye and I did a, uh, an advanced guiding clinic for blind, blind and visually impaired skiers on last Friday. So I volunteer and I also you know, support it as much as I can. And it's grown tremendously. It's a great program. Great. Well, it's up here at Capella and uh, people should come by and check it out. Thank you so much for talking to me. It's a pleasure. Yeah, thanks. And you guys are going to get back on the thanks, mountain, Jeff. right? We are. Get a few more runs in. It's good to meet you, Jeff. Thanks. Good to meet you, Kevin. Break. All right. Uh, we'll be right back with more of This Week in Telluride. <laughs>